All right, welcome back to the Sooner Surge, and today we're going to do a little recruiting update for you. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button, be a part of what's going on at the Sooner Surge. Uh, we're growing by big numbers, and we have a lot of content coming out, so please be a part of it. Hit that subscribe button. Also, follow us on Twitter, and you can catch our podcast on Spotify as well there. Um, today, got some recruiting updates, got some commit dates that are set soon. Uh, one of them that just came down the pipe uh, as a commit date, October 19th, Michael Boganowski. Brody, give us a little update on that. We've talked a lot about Boganowski recently, and, and I'm sure everyone had seen Steve Wiltfong predicted Michael Boganowski to end up in Oklahoma sooner. This is someone who, you know, Oklahoma is recruiting as, you know, Cheetah, if you will, but primarily safety. Brandon Hall is leading the way in that four star linebacker, number one player in the state of Kansas. Right. And I want to refresh everyone. Caden Green was the number one player in that state last year, who I believe, um, or Missouri. He was one or two in one Missouri. of those. Missouri. And Oklahoma, they're doing damage up there in Missouri well, and Kansas. This is going to be two straight years if they land Boganowski that they've pulled the number one player out of Missouri and the number one player out of Kansas potentially. Well, and don't forget the year before, there's a guy by the name of Jaron Canick. Um, exactly out of Kansas. So uh, Venables, man, he he lo- he's you know lived in that area. Obviously, he has the K State ties, and, and Boganowski, you know, a lot of you know he was really kind of in the Kansas State mindset there for a while. Uh, and 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 look at what Kansas State. I mean, last week they threw out an egg against OSU. Yeah. That couldn't help. But, I mean, just look at the way the safeties are playing at OU. Uh, you well, wouldn't want to be a part of that, right? And it's not even that. I mean, just just look at what K State did uh, this weekend, and and then look at what Oklahoma did against Texas. Like to me, that's really all. I like we're go to the SEC where you know you can play in an elite defense. It seems, and he's the prototype for a cheetah, right? And I know everyone wants to make the joke about he's being recruited as a cheetah because you know say that with a lot of guys, but he's the cheetah prototype. He really is. He's a linebacker safety hybrid. And maybe they want him to use him there, or maybe they just want to use him at safety. I don't know. Boganowski being fonged, that's a big deal. Uh, and it's a great sign to see the Oklahoma's going to tap into uh, the state of Kansas and pull in, you know, Michael Boganowski. And they've done this a lot where they've gone into these states and got the number one player. Well, and it sounds like everything's trending in the right direction with Michael Boganowski with the fong, uh, you know, prediction. And then just everything as of the last few weeks, it seems like everything's going good there. So that's October 19th. Put that on your calendar, guys. October 19th, we'll have info leading up to that as well. Um, you have October 12th. You have this Thursday. You have the offensive lineman from NFL Academy, Brody. Yeah, Daniel Aiken Kumi. Uh, he visited Arkansas State Week, and it seemed like everything has been all Oklahoma ever since. Uh, that's just what it seemed like. This is one that I'd be shocked if he doesn't end up a suit. Uh, he has a ton of potential. And I just mentioned they're getting the number one player in the state of Kansas, potentially, in Michael Boganowski, should Boganowski commit to the Sooners. Look, it's it, the number one player in Europe, Daniel Akinkumi, potentially could commit as well. So they're doing a lot of damage getting these guys if they potentially land him. He's 6'5", 320, and Akinkumi, three-star. He's got a lot of potential. He's someone who you can put him up there with the Danny Okoye's of Oklahoma's class and say he's he's got a lot of potential. Maybe you know maybe it'll take a little time for him to get going. You know he's he's still got a lot to work on, but he has a ton of potential. Aiken Kumi is someone who who could be a starter at Oklahoma. You know, is come time for a sophomore junior year. Well, and that, you're right. His upside is really big, and that's the thing. Yeah. And uh, Sooner fans, go follow him on Twitter. He does a YouTube channel, uh, and I think his visit to Oklahoma was on there. He had some stuff from behind the scenes. It's pretty cool. Go follow it. Uh, check it out on Twitter. Um, and then, you know, we'll move over. And that's this Thursday, Sooner fans. So put that down on your calendar this Thursday. Has he set a time on that yet? I, I, I haven't seen a time. I haven't seen it. Okay. With so, the time change, it could be something crazy where he's Yeah, that's true. It's a big, awesome. big time change here. And, um, we'll stick with the offensive linemen here, and, and, and let's go to – Hey, OU's next matchup is OU versus UCF, the two teams that were in on Eddie, Pierre-Louis. Yeah, you know, Pierre-Louis, four-star recruit, and his ranking is kind of crazy because 
247 Sports has him as the you know four star, 240th best player nationally, and then you you know switch over to Rivals, they have him number 26 nationally, number two interior O lineman. So he's from Tampa Catholic, Oklahoma has been very involved there. Lewis Carter, uh, their their four star linebacker signee last year, uh, he was from Tampa Catholic. They were very involved with T.J. Moore, who's a, a current Clemson commit, also at Tampa Catholic. And then you have Eddie Perry Louise at Tampa, Tampa Catholic. This one has been a very polarizing uh, recruitment. It's kind of gone back and forth between Oklahoma and UCF. He visited Oklahoma the 9th of June. He's been to uh, Florida eight times, UCF five times, Oklahoma once. Uh, and he's potentially, you know, there's rumors about him potentially visiting on uh, the UCF game on the 21st. That that would be big if you could get him on campus. Like Boganowski, he got falling to the Sooners, and it does seem like everything's kind of starting to finally trend in the direction of Oklahoma. And it's interesting, too, because, you know, with both Boganowski and Pierre-Louis, when you have recruitments where, you know, it's so back and forth, you know, this is not the first time it's looked really like heavy OU for either of these guys. But for the fact that these guys are just now starting to enter the predictions, it probably shows that there's more clarity as far as where these guys' heads are at uh, as with Pierre-Louis Boganowski. So he's someone interior O-lineman. If you could land, you know, potentially land him, which it does seem like that's where things are trending, he's got a ton of potential, 6'3", 335. He, you know, he's that interior O lineman who has a lot. You know, he's got that dog in him essentially. I don't know if y'all have seen him running the, the track videos, yeah. but he's been like crazy athleticism for someone who's like three. Is it yeah, three thirty five? That, that's yeah. crazy. Crazy athleticism, and once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention if you're a high school recruit and you're watching OU and you're watching how they're playing and you're watching freshmen make impacts. You're going to want to be a part of that, right? I mean, it's like, hey, if you're good enough to play, they're going to put you on the field. Caden Green. Caden Green, great example. Now, that's two offensive linemen we mentioned. What about the Grant Bricks, Brody? Haven't heard anything on that. It's been very quiet. What, what are you What are you thinking on that? that? That's who Grant Bricks is, right? It's going to be quiet. It's OU Nebraska. In my mind, it should be similar to Boganowski where you're kind of like, wait, where – like. The Nebraska thing, it's nothing more than that's, you know, close to home for him. Maybe relationships there. But, yeah, Oklahoma is pretty far away from where he's at in, in Iowa compared to Nebraska. So that's, you know, what Nebraska has going for them. Ultimately, I, I'd i put the odds in favor of Oklahoma, but, you know, not by much. And that's really a guess. There's nothing behind, you know, no yeah. source of information backing that up. It's just interesting because it's one, you know, I think he'll be an Eli Bowen type where he, he just wakes up and commits one day. I, that's how I foresee it. And I don't even know if he, he'll be the one to commit through Hayes Foss. He, this is the type of guy who could just commit to the coaches. It, it, it's just, you know, he's the complete opposite of what David Stone is as far as social media presence. Yeah, and that's three offensive linemen right there. Even if they're landing two of those, it's, it's good. But if they were to get all three, that would be amazing kind of close to the class for sure. Yeah, because you already got three committed, and Isaiah Autry, B.J. Yeah. Brooks, and then uh, Josh Isosa. So, yeah, I mean, potentially, you know, I think it does seem like they're going to land Akin Kunmi uh, this week. And then Pierre-Louis, that's one that very much so seems to be trending in favor of Oklahoma. So it does seem like with, with you know, when you look at the board left, it's, you know, the top guys on there are Eddie Pierre-Louis, Grant Brooks, Bricks, Michael Boganowski, and Devin Jordan. I can sit here confidently and say three of the four of those are very much trending in favor of Oklahoma. Yeah, Bricks probably the least confident you feel. Yes. That's kind of what I've been hearing as well. Um, so that's kind of the main guys there. What what about hearing anything on CJ Jackson? I don't think CJ Jackson, um, I don't think he'll end up a sooner. I I I don't think Oklahoma's gonna be too involved there. What about powers? And, and yeah, let me real quick on CJ Jackson. He put out his, you know, whole thing. I, I don't know if y'all saw the graphic of it, but LSU, there's a bunch of other schools. Oklahoma has been in contact there. And, you know, they have been, you know, pushing CJ Jackson, but it does seem like he wants a complete reset in his recruitment. And I don't think Oklahoma, I think they're more focused on other def defensive end targets in the 2024 class. Reggie Powers, uh, you know, 
I, if they can get him on campus, I there's no way I, I don't see him committing. I, I think. There's- does the Boganowski stuff affect at all? I don't think it affects it. If you okay. look at Powers, this is not someone you're going to say no to. Uh, there's rumors of him potentially visiting sometime soon. If that, you know, if you can get him on campus, I think you'll land him. It's Oklahoma and UCLA right now for for Reggie Powers. All right. Any other guys you want to talk about? I don't think there's anyone else right okay. now. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. We just wanted to get a recruiting update for you all. Uh, loyal uh, subscribers, appreciate it. Keep it up, keep up, uh, keep commenting. If you have any questions for us, put them in the, in the comments there as well. Uh, but there you are, recruiting update for this Monday afternoon. We got a bye week this week. We got two weeks till the next game. Once again, announced 11 a.m. kickoff. Thank you, Big 12. You suck. I hate the Big 12. I hate it. I'm ready to get out of the conference and get some better game times. That's going to hurt potential visitors, too. That's what I'm saying. They stay – hey, I, I don't want to get in a rant because I can get on a soapbox here, but the Big 12 likes to screw OU on game times. They've been doing 11 o'clock kicks for the last I don't know how many years. It's getting old. But that's my soapbox. I'm going to get off it now. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. As always, Boomer.